pot, 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 pot. Hey everyone, <clears throat> welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. The Volvo S60 is back. This is the one where we replaced the fuel pump. This was months ago. Now the owner said uh, he's driving along and then it started shaking violently and he lost power. Then it was fine for a few days. Yeah, for a few days. And now it's just dead. Like, uh, it feels like a single cylinder misfire. And it says no power and it shakes, shakes like crazy. We'll pull the codes. Here we go in the engine computer. Outside temperature sensor signal too low. Misfire at least one cylinder startup. Misfire cylinder one startup. Misfire cylinder two catalytic converter damage. That's not good. Front heated oxygen sensor bank signal too high. So let's run the car. And I have all the coils the mounting bolts removed so we can do a very simple quick cylinder drop test to see which cylinder is actually misfiring so let's start it up pop 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 So it's either one or two, right? Let's try number one. And no change, even though there is a spark, but there's no change in number one. Let's try number two. Definitely a change. Yes, number two works. Definitely change to number three. Number three works. Number four. Yep, definitely a change. And number five. So number one, no change, right? Yeah. Even though it looks like the spark's okay. So let's focus on number one. We'll uh, pull the spark plug out, see what happens. It looks like eight Okay, spark. There, this is some crazy stuff. So we took the coils out and the spark plugs. Here's spark plug number two. Looks beautiful, no problems. <laughs> spark plug number one is smashed mechanically. Like something hammered it. You can see bam, 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 just completely hammered. And obviously we have no spark in that cylinder. So, we can take a boroscope and look inside, see what happened. Like something got sucked in there. Now this is a turbocharged car, and what the heck could have gotten sucked into the cylinder? I mean the turbo, see there's the intercooler, and let's see the turbo is... Where's our turbo? Do you see the turbo? <laughs> I have no idea. There's the air intake. Turbo is like behind. It's right there. So I hope the turbo is okay. That just blows my mind. So this is intake manifold. There's the throttle body. This comes from the intercooler. That goes to the intercooler. Let's take a look inside and see, uh, see what we find. So using our test long NTS 500 boroscope, I'm just going inside the cylinder using the side view camera to look at the valves and see what, what is going on in here. Do we see anything crazy? Or bad. We should do a cylinder compression check for sure on this thing. Is something something got in there and you can see the surface of the head it has like little 
pit mark. So something was jumping around in there and causing a causing some damage. See the aluminum <laughs> is like all messed up. We can go to cylinder number two to compare. You see how that's a nice even color. Mm -hmm. So did you hear any bad noises? I don't like know. I didn't hear. You didn't anything. hear anything. Yeah, it was just like a sudden thing. Yeah, so that's cylinder number two. See the valve is open right there. Yeah. That's that's the valve seat. Mm -hmm. and cylinder number one. See, it has like the ch -ch 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 -ch, mm -hmm. like someone was shooting at it. Yeah. And like little bits. So what I want to do is actually install a pressure transducer and see what the running compression waveform looks like. <clears throat> Maybe compare it to cylinder number. Man, that's that's beat up. piston itself you can also see is has a little pits on it and obviously it's oily and wet because it wasn't firing number two there's number two looks dry and yeah, that's that's normal It's beat up. <laughs> so we at least need a new spark plug and do a compression check. So we have to replace this number one spark plug and just for uh, diagnostic purposes I have an, a used Volvo sp spark plug from this car that we replaced uh, a few months ago during the tune-up. So we're gonna pop this back in and just see how it runs. Uh, quickest way to check if there's still a problem we'll do the compression check and stuff. Alright so Coils are installed. I got the spare spark plug in number one. Let's see what happens. So this is going to say, is this repair going to be very expensive or are we going to get away easy? So it's still misfiring, but it sounded better, right? Yeah. So let's you see it's still shaking. Mm -hmm. Obviously a big change. Almost no change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's. I think there's mechanical damage. Well, we have to put a pressure transducer in that cylinder. To see, see what happens. Okay, so we're doing an in-cylinder pressure test. Now, this is version two of the um, pressure transducer that's available for sale right now. I'm actually making batches of these. So when the light's on, it's active. We're using the 200 psi transducer. with a regular compression hose and then a sink on the number one coil and the spark plug is grounded against the cylinder head. So let's set this up. If you have a Pico scope, it's uh, very easy. You just pick the correct custom probe and these will be available, actually they are available on uh, my Google Drive. So if you order one of these, I'll send you a link and you can download the Pico scales for uh, no extra charge. So that's channel one. Channel two, let's do uh, plus or minus 20 volts. And the scale here, see right here, it's minus 15 to 225. So the pressure transducer is on. It's ready to go. So let's fire it up 
and see what happens there. So the spark is definitely there. There's our in cylinder pressure. Let's rev it up. And shut it down. Okay. Now let's back up. So here's our entire. So is this good or bad? <clears throat> Well, let's compare this, let's save this capture and compare it to number two, and it'll be uh, apples to apples. So on cylinder one, the peak compression at idle is 43 PSI, which you might think is a little low, but that might be normal for this car. That's why we need to compare it to cylinder number two, which we're going to do right now. So let's roll the scope. Same, so fire it up. Let it stabilize. And oh, let's see if the spark is occurring. Here's number two spark. And there's no contribution to number one right now. Crazy, right? Now check engine lights flashing. <laughs> so let's drop the scale down and get this guy right here. Okay, what's our peak compression here? This is definitely a big difference we're at about 75 which is I would say much more acceptable you see it's nice and even and if we zoom in we can compare these two waveforms but there's definitely a big difference you can see put our rulers in how the exhaust plateau is much more flat it seems like there's some turbulence in number one but the peak compression is definitely like 30 psi too low that's why we have a misfire in cylinder one right now but we can take it for a test drive it seems to be doing a little better, but if we put it under load and spool it up... It might be a turbo problem, but I'm not sure how that would uh, get through the intercooler. But we'll at least take it for a drive, see, see how it works. Well, the car's driving actually pretty well. Still got boost. Amazing, it's just got that little turbo sound. And at idle, it does shake, so cylinder number one compression is not as good as it used to be. But what's the worst case scenario? I mean, the engine has to come apart to fix it the right way, so I say just keep driving it. Just keep keep going and eventually, I guess, uh, trade it in or something. But we'll, uh, we'll make a decision, we'll talk to the owner and see what he wants to do.